What is up, Collider TV Talk fans? Josh McCuga back here for another live episode on a Tuesday, August 8th, 28, 2817? <laughs> yep, 2017. Yep, from the future. ESPN 8, <laughs> the Ocho, live all day today. If you guys are, are bored and you want to go check out some weird sports, you just want to be like Jason Bateman in Dodgeball, check it out. Uh, we have a very, very special guest here today. You guys know her from Collider.com. Uh, if you are reading anything online about TV and it's not written by Allison Keene, it's absolute horse shit. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. I don't no know comments. any other TV com writers out there, but she's here, Allison King. Yay! Hey, y'all. All right, Allison. Now we have uh, a little bit of a show here to convince you to move to Los Angeles so you can be on the show more often. Yeah, it's Is gonna that happen. gonna happen? It's never gonna happen. Great. Nope. Awesome. 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 <laughs> also joining us, Shut back down. Legend, Grace Hancock. Hey guys. How is everybody doing? Um, don't forget to tweet me your Twitter questions at Mrs. Graceface, hashtag Collider TV Talk. Don't hashtag it. The other thing we were talking about <laughs> this uh, that's, that's for later in the show in the that's after for a hours later time. portion of Collider TV Talk. Collider TV Talk Nights, as it's being called. It's a Baywatch Nights spinoff. I know Allison's <laughs> really excited. Oh, yeah. More TV for now, me to watch. <laughs> Allison, Allison you're, uh, you're out here for the TCA Awards, yes. TCAs, everything. Uh, let's talk TCAs. What has been, I guess, a highlight? What's been going yeah. on, things that we've seen thus far? So first to clarify, the TCAs are not the Teen Choice Awards. What? Okay, it's uh, the... Uh, why did I put you on the show? Uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry. Delete, delete, delete. <laughs> Spoiler. Spoiler alert, guys. Um, it's the TV Critics Association. Got it. Um, so yeah, we have a press tour that happens twice a year mm -hmm. um, in January and August, and all the TV critics come out from all over the country mm -hmm. and internationally, too, and the uh, networks and studios sort of present all of their fall TV and what's happening and sometimes returning shows. And then we have our own award show that happens um, where we you know, honor the best in TV, obviously, from the year. One of the things that's interesting about it is we don't separate categories for male and female performances. It's just mm -hmm. performer. So right, nice. we, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, and actually yeah. Carrie Coon this year yeah. uh, had a, um, a, a first among the TCA awards, uh, which is she was nominated in one category for two shows, Fargo and The Leftovers, right. and one naturally and one. because Good. she's Carrie Coon and she is and she does no a wrong national treasure. And here's yes, the she thing is with Carrie Coon too, and we've talked about it before. One, she was nowhere before Leftovers. She had like a credit to her name, right? If you look on her IMDb, like there isn't much before Leftovers. She gets on Leftovers, destroys, gets on Fargo, absolutely destroys. And the fact that the Emmys, like the Emmy voters were just up there and I made the joke about it before. It's like when you do a fantasy football draft and you just hit auto draft, they were like, just repeat last year. Just hit auto draft. Just, we yeah. don't really know what we want to do. Yeah, let's give it to Leah Schreiber for Ray Donovan C5. He, never mind. <laughs> Keep going, Allison. Well, TCA Awards. What, was there a shocker? Was there anything? Yeah, um, that's what I wanted to ask. Well, there, you know, This Is Us sort of surprised me um, yeah. as a winner. Just It was just such a strong category for for new series. Mm -hmm. But um, I was really, really proud of Atlanta. You guys know oh, that I am, live in Atlanta. And um, I actually got to present the award for Outstanding Comedy to Atlanta, which was super, super awesome. That's so, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So that was my we, personal highlight. We but, gushed yeah. over Atlanta on this show, too, because it's, it's, it's genius. It's so good. It's so good. A and the fact that... One of the when when all the stuff was going down about Han, the Han oh, the, huh? the Han Solo movie, there you go. I was like, wait a second, they're going to go into reshoots, they're going to postpone this thing. Yeah. That means we won't get Donald Glover <laughs> for like, like no, another year. But Atlanta we need Atlanta. Season two. Yeah, I can't listen I to Childish Gambino much longer before I need another <laughs> season of Atlanta. Uh, well, that's so, yeah. awesome. It was awesome, and, and Handmaid's Tale, you know, won two awards as well. Did they really? um, yeah, and yeah, and Speechless actually won for outstanding achievement in youth programming, which I think is because most of the critics don't watch kids programming. But <laughs> Speechless is amazing, so I'm just Very always happy. Show. Yeah, that its yeah. profile is being yeah, raised. I love um, and Big Little Lies, of course, which was right. So awesome. Lights, I but, loved Big Little yeah. Lies. Yeah. yeah. So it was great. It's a good night. It's it's not televised, so uh, no one got to see Kristen Chenoweth, who was the host. Um, um, do a surprise duet with Sterling K. Brown. I from know they this did for us. good. Wicked, your favorite musical. Get out of here. It yeah. was the only musical I've ever liked in my life. <laughs> it's I, I'm not a fan of musicals either. It was yes. magical. It's a new one it I was. Like to keep. <laughs> I know. Yes. I want to. Is it somewhere? Like, is there like a pirated? You, you shady? can find it. I can find it. Well, okay, great. So Milo Ventimiglia was actually filming it like a proud dad. Oh, so <laughs> right in the field. It, it was. Amazing, um, but yeah, some of the the PR people I think were filming it. I mean, it's on Twitter. You can okay. you can find it. On like, Twitter. Mm, like yeah. now later Secretly. in the show, I'll be finding it. Later in the show, you're going to give us some inside scoops from the TCAs, yes. uh, things that you've seen that you can't really talk about yet, and things I've seen that I can't unsee. Yes, and wish that I had. <laughs> Fall TV. Excellent, we're excellent. Gonna, so what's up next, uh, Grace? 
All right, so Carl Urban has said that he is open to returning to the character of Dredd for the TV series adaptation that's currently titled Judge Dredd, Mega City. Mega City. Mega City. So... If they don't have a guy saying that at the beginning of every episode, Mega City, yeah. I will be legit upset. <laughs> like, they need to on. hire... I know! Welcome why do you think I said it like that? Mega I feel strongly. City. Yeah, like yeah. if you're like, you know, in, in Fifth Element, you know, like, welcome to this city, or... Welcome, welcome. to Mega City. It's yeah. like, the, get the no. fuck out. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. It's not Mega Megaville. City. <laughs> City. I mean, so what do you guys, do you think that, where do you, first of all, where do you see this series landing if this does go forward, and do we care if Carl Urban care? returns or not? I do. I like Carl well, Urban. Yeah. And I liked Almost Human on Fox, which did not get its due, yeah. and Carl Urban was amazing in that. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to see him return to, to TV. That would be See, I amazing. love yeah. Me too. The original Judge Dredd, I'm a big fan of anything Stallone. Um, but I think that Dredd, was a much better movie. Mm. And I thought that it was really well done. It almost had like feeling of the raid a little bit. Okay. Um, and I thought that uh, Olivia Thurlby was actually very good in that role. And I and Carl Urban is a very underrated actor. He is very, I think so too. Yeah, yeah, they put great. him in roles and they're just like, oh yeah, Carl Urban was in that movie. He's yeah, so yeah. charismatic. Yes. He's so like, he always stands out. He's yes. always someone yeah. you remember Even from. And he's very like gracious and intelligent in real life he, He's too. doing a, yeah. a reverse Tom Hardy here. Yeah. So in, <laughs> <laughs> instead of the lower half of his face being covered, it's this. But you know what? Tom Hardy can pull it off. I believe Carl sure, Urban can. But like, sure, look sure. at this angsty frown. He's a yeah, yeah. Well, that's sort right? of like, that's how, it's, it's an urban. It's <laughs> they how you know it. Quick story. That's his, that's his I thing. went to Yogurt Land on Sunday night, and they were out of peanut butter yes. yogurt. Exact same face. You guys look, look. That's the exact and he's same relatable face. too. Yogurt Land on Sunday night too. <laughs> there you go, Dread. Hit it. Um, here's the thing. I In think that the Dread series everybody would be very excited for. Everybody loves that that franchise. I think it's a really cool franchise, and I think it would serve very well on television because you can investigate a ton of stories because there was a ton of IP for the for the property, right. Right. especially in Mega City. In Mega um, City. But putting Carl Urban back in that role takes it up another notch. Yeah, it, I don't it, think you can do it without him. You could do like a TV actor that has some chops, you know what I mean? But it wouldn't get the same Like kind one of or thing. two chops? Yeah. One, one or two, just a couple chops. Just like a couple chops. chops. Like a half a pork but chop. Carl Urban, no veal chops. all the chops. All the chops. <laughs> Carl Urban, too, um, in this role is fantastic. And I think if you put Carl Urban in this, it goes to a Netflix or it goes to an Amazon. If it's just a TV yeah, actor, it may go to a sci-fi or like a... Yeah, and, and that might not be bad. I mean, no. it, it, cable wouldn't be bad. Um, premium would be interesting. Streaming would be interesting. Um, broadcast, I don't think it would no. survive. No. no, I mean, I just yeah, I, I see this as like a streaming Sarah kind Connor of situation. Chron also, Sarah yeah. Connor yeah. Chronicles. What was the one? A Bionic Woman. The, yeah. Those shows weren't meant for network television. Yeah, and and again, like you know, in in like when Almost Human was on Fox. I mean, Fox doesn't give its shows sometimes a very long time to find an audience. Yeah, so in, TV shows like these oh, sort of oh, shows. Oh. Yeah, but of course then again it has a built-in audience with, you know, the dread film. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah it kind of has like this great little cult following even though that film in in 2012 did horribly yeah. at the box office. <laughs> well, but, because but Carl I liked knew it. who Carl, Carl Urban was and they were like they were expecting Judge Dredd, Sylvester Stallone, mm. who basically wore like the uh, garbage men uniforms that Homer Simpson <laughs> bought when he owned <laughs> the uh, the trash <laughs> service in in Springfield. So I think they were expecting a totally different Dread. Now they're going to get, I think, a Dread that everybody's been wanting for a long time is the is one we get in the TV series. All right, what's next, Grace? All right, so next we're going to talk about Preacher. Last night we have season two, episode eight, Holes. Uh, <laughs> you mean like the Shia LaBeouf movie, Holes? Holes. <laughs> yep. Exactly. They did like a crossover episode. Uh, yeah. Shia LaBeouf did not return, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, Joshy, what are your, I mean, did you say I, loser. No, I said what a jerk, but now I'm sort of like, wish loser. I hadn't said anything at all. Friggin' Shia. Loser. Sorry, probably Shia. in jail. No. Um, anyway, so what did you think? Here's the thing. And right. I, when this season. Already, I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. When this season started, I was so on board. I was like, it's yeah. going somewhere. Sure. It had some momentum. They were all sort of getting along. It was this weird, like, road rules, spring break preacher mix. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and then, that's when I stopped watching this season. I just haven't caught up. I, I still, you know, I'm down with preacher, but yeah. Down <laughs> then, with, you're down with then. PPP, the preacher. <laughs> yeah. But then all of a sudden they get to New Orleans and it's like, we got to find God. And now they can't find God. The show is totally stagnant. We're on this, this vampire saving his son story. We're on Tulip having PTSD. We yeah. have, it's, and, and this Grail organization, which seemed to be the only interesting thing in the last three episodes, just is eating booberry cereal in places. Like right. that's all we have. Which from sounds them. delicious. I honestly got to tell you, I get really excited for booberry cereal now. I, is this the hair star is part yes. of this now? So is he good? I mean, it's. We haven't even seen him since. We just oh, saw him in okay. that one little part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So 
there isn't really a ton going on in Preacher right now. Right. And I am bored. Yeah, I mean, it just feels very, it feels very, like, cut. It's like we yes. have five minutes with this character, five minutes with this character, five minutes, like, th the sentence, will Eugene team up with Hitler to escape from hell <laughs> is not something I ever thought I would say. It's a weird sentence. It really is. And it's a weird show. And we don't, like, hell, there are some really funny parts of hell, like they wipe their ass with duct tape, and they can only eat Zagnuts, which everybody knows is the worst candy bar in the world. <laughs> New sponsor of TV Talk, Zagnuts, son of a bitch. Um... It's, there are funny parts of hell, but I have no idea where it fits in the story yet. I mean, hopefully it comes full circle, but having us wait around for five episodes of it is not really great television. Right, and I don't love like hanging out in crazy town yes. for that whole five episodes. Well, it's, it's the same thing with season one. We talked about this a little before yes. the show, is that, you know, season one, when the show goes off the comics, sometimes it's great. You know, sometimes the adjustments are good, but season one was one of those exercises where it was just one long prelude, yes. and you don't really, because Grace was saying you hadn't watched season one, like you don't. Kind yeah, of and do. that's what everybody yeah, really it's, it's it's a complete standalone yeah. because they kind of just trashed everything that they did in season right. one. Yeah, and not so trash, but it's just it can be separate. And, right, and it's the first, a standalone. First few episodes of season two is they finally go on this road trip. I'm like, thank God they're yeah. on the road. Here we right. go. We're gonna start getting these vignettes. It's almost the like dynamics. an anthology series. Yes, very much yeah. so. And then that's when I got you know busy with other TV, and now apparently I hear it's sort of back to season one feelings of Correct. what are we doing? There you go. All right, what is next, guys? We are gonna go to. Inside Scoops with Allison Key. Look at that graphic. Whoa, Inside go away. Scoops. Nice. God, that's like some yeah. dateline. You like, should have put a spoiler great. up there, so, Cody. There you go. <laughs> my friends that don't think I have a real job, like I need to like post that on Facebook yes. or something. Be like, that is really... We need really, to like, Photoshop we you, need like, you in a great like pantsuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just right. like, <laughs> like a, a Veronica Corningstone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, yeah. returning full. Yeah. Or maybe like one of these, like the lean-in. What would be kind of cool is if you had like one of those candy scoopers and you were like... And well, you're like you're scooping candy. Let's work. Let's Too workshop far. it. Maybe let's okay, workshop it. My yeah, bad, yeah. Right, <laughs> It's kind of a hat on the hat on that one. My bad, guys. So, right. so What's one, up? one of the things about TCA in the summertime is that it forces me to uh, remember that fall TV is almost here, which is a very um, difficult Daunting. and stressful Daunting. time. Uh, I have to say the the broadcast pilot season is kind of grim this year. Uh, we had a lot of great things last uh, year. This year, the upfronts trailers were horrendous this is some stuff that's uh, it's not good in a, in a way though it is good because then we won't have as much tv to catch up with and Correct. then we can watch you know better yeah. older shows sure so i'm going to start positive with this and then okay. and then go from there i like that so <laughs> we'll, st we'll start and with then it'll get good. more and more sort grim of like, sort of like yes. a terrible relationship <laughs> sort of right? like preacher. it starts off so wonderful it's yeah. amazing like and 500 days of summer here for a few yeah. Minutes. Yeah. This, is, this is yes fall tv is 500 days of summer um okay so starting off i'm mostly looking forward to mostly returning series honestly comedies like Fresh Off the Boat, Blackish, Speechless, um, Curb Your Enthusiasm is going to be know. back on HBO. Right, I right, right. not wait. Um, of course, my period pieces, Outlander, Poldark. Oh, that one goes off reference. to David Griffith. Cut to the Outlander. Poldark image, Cody. <laughs> oh, we don't have one? Good. We had a David Griffith cam last time, right? We did have a Griffin cam. Griffin yeah. cam, yeah. Um, so Versailles the is also Graham. a great show. <laughs> Versailles, huh? Versailles on Ovation. Yes. Whoa. It's about the, the reign of Louis XIV. Yeah, I am um, thrilled for that. Do you watch Versailles? No, I haven't, but okay. I've, I, anything it's like so, it's in good. that kind of time period, it's, I'm like, eh. Yes, it's so, so gotta, good. Gotta um, that. And then Mr. Stop Robot will be face. back. Uh, Stranger Things. So, I mean, we have a lot of, you know, and, and Top of the Lake, China Girl. Did you guys yes. watch the first oh, Top right, of the Lake right, from right, Sundance? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, it's a lot yes. of solid returning series. A lot of, and, and that's great. And, and that's a lot and already. Peaky Blinders coming in the winter, but I'm just. I never got into Peaky Blinders. I didn't get into Peaky Blinders either. I believe this. It, is, it, it has everything should that I, I should yes. love, but I don't know. I'll come back it's to really it. It's really easy to get there. And you kind of have like a Grace vibe. So Grace is the main character in okay. the oh. show. <laughs> I, was no. <laughs> <laughs> I got real no. confused for a you, second. Peaky Blinders is... I was like, I do? That's perfect. <laughs> anyway, keep going. Um, okay, and then also Mindhunter on Netflix, which is yes. the David Fincher, Jonathan Groff, FBI. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. That That's is, like probably my top. I'm like... Yeah, yeah, for new shows, definitely. Yeah. I completely agree. Um, Before so, we move on real quick, did yeah, you yeah. like the trailer for American Vandal? Did I see the trailer for American the, Vandal? The, I suddenly the, asked it's myself. The it's the one where like somebody's series. drawing... <laughs> All the dicks. Did you oh, see this? Oh, my... Okay, I didn't see it. I saw the Twitter reaction to it, and that... I felt was enough okay. to it, frankly. <laughs> okay, um, I loved it. Like, I'm just going to be straight. <laughs> yes, like, yes. Did you watch any of Comrade Detective? I had the screener sitting in my hotel room oh, right now man, to watch. So, so okay. Yeah, we dug it. it was, this is, this it was is so, like, you guys bring me on for like, in, like expert stuff. I'm like, I haven't watched anything. <laughs> I'm not watching any television. Like, I'm watching so much television. That's why it's inside scoops. That's why it's inside yeah. like, But you invented TV, right? What are all your thoughts? <laughs> well. No pressure. So Poldark. Um, that's the second Poldark reference, just so we're counting. Um, so, so cautious optimism for coming series. Um, 10 Days in the Valley, ABC, Kira Sedwick. Okay. Very dark crime series. I'm kind of over that and the whole like puzzle box thing where we take seven episodes to figure out 
what's happening, but right. mm, sure, you know. it's a little formulaic. Maybe. Um, The Deuce, David Simon, mm -hmm. HBO. Yeah, the HBO one. Oh, okay. Does that have? Okay, here's my thought yes. on that. One, I don't like James Franco and uh, yeah, yeah, acting. Yeah. And there are two. And there are two James Francos. <laughs> like, just the trailer was like, so you still betting? You still coming <laughs> around the bar? Like, what? It was Anyway, yeah. I love the idea. I love, And the same thing is I love the idea behind vinyl. And I, I'm actually it, it really enjoying vinyl it. It feels vinylish. It feels vinylish. And, and I, I trust David yeah. Simon. You know, I mean, obviously The Wire, Treme, True. Generation Kill, everything he's done. Um, George Pelicanos is also... Uh, co-creating it with him and George Pelicanos is a crime writer who's written some of like the most intense episodes of The Wire okay. so I right. feel like the deuce is going to be just super intense okay. and I, again I just we'll see we'll Got see it. cautious optimism cautious yeah optimism. yeah yeah um, all the CW shows you know guys like they had some some struggles some of yes. them last year but I'm always <laughs> what? here what to mean? see where they go next <laughs> <laughs> we have some funny place. email exchanges about Flash and Arrow it's, it's pretty spot on yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have many thoughts um, 13 episodes I'm just saying 13 episodes 13, okay yeah, here's yeah. the thing here's go. this okay if the Flash would do an, an Arrow and any of these others because the CW uh, president Mark Pedowitz has been very clear they are not going to cut down the episode order no. it's never going to happen so do what Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. did and break it up into three sections. That's do what three I said. mini seasons. Yeah. Um, you know, last year for Flash, for example, you could have had one third of it Flashpoint, one third Alchemy, and one third Savitar. Boom, Boom. fix your Ooh. show. Yeah. So, just Instead saying. of like four episodes where they're so like, you did it, Here's TV. a villain of the week. <laughs> she did it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> yeah, so it's. Uh, She's all genius. Oh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. They can steal any of my ideas. They're free. You know, yes. please, guys. I just make make Barry a hero again. Um, <laughs> Law and Order: True Crime: The Menendez Murders yes. on NBC. I'm I'm sort of biased for true crime series. Oh, so girl, yeah. it's, jam. We're gonna. I'm hoping it's good. It's Law and Order. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's gonna be. It's, yeah. it's not gonna be bad. Um, the Gifted on Fox actually looks pretty good. Okay. I'm I'm optimistic. Didn't love the first okay. trailer, but I, since then. Yeah, it's it, it takes I, back. I don't think I've seen the first trailer. Mm -hmm. It's not ringing any bells in my brain. Yeah, no, Gifted is the X Men uh, universe oh, one. Oh, right, 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 one of right, several right, right. X Men ish shows. That's yeah. Coming right, right, on. yeah, it's they're hard yeah. to keep track of. Right. They sure. are. Um, this one is. Have you seen anything on Cloak and Dagger? I have not. That's okay. not going to be till mid season, right, twenty eighteen. Right, 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 right. But um, yeah, so Gifted looks pretty good. It's um, uh, it sort of takes the X Men back to like the roots of. Um, having misfits on the run basically right. which right. is you know that, I think it'll be a good thing and then also the mayor on Fox yeah. comedy is actually a lot better the than one with um, uh, the, the, the kid who becomes mayor of the small town but yes. he's in high school or he wants to be a rapper he's a, yeah he's Love an aspiring rapper he becomes that mayor trailer. that's like the best log line of anything yeah. ever I'm like on board <laughs> and that's, it's got yeah. uh, Leah Michelle from, uh, from Glee. Glee yeah, yeah. and it's okay. it's one of those things where like it's a great idea for a movie we'll see if they can sustain it for a yeah. TV show sure yeah. um, as for the stinkers this fall there are a lot that I'm not even going to mention um, <laughs> some that I've forgotten and I watched them two days ago um <laughs> um, but I, without saying it, you know, Inhumans is, we'll see. I'm, I'm very curious to see what people's reaction will be to Inhumans and the Orville, because they're both very, very popular interesting. Right now, but they're, they're very popular. pushing a social... I see what your eyes are saying. <laughs> listen, to, listen to what I'm not saying. Um, it's... I, I'm very curious because I think that they, the Orville in particular has a very interesting tone um, that is basically just Star Trek. Um, mm -hmm. So we, cool, cool, but cool. but not what people are expecting from Seth MacFarlane, I think. Yeah. So yeah. look for some full reviews coming on Collider.com in the future. We're not allowed to review it yet, but yeah. I, I will say, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. <laughs> Man, That's you are, scoop. this is, you, this is <laughs> like when you ask, is something wrong? Uh, no, everything is, um, Fine. So it's this is much, much, much like the Inhumans panel at TCA, yeah. where it was very the Inhumans panel at Comic Con. I didn't talk to one TV person I know that was there. They were like, "Nah, we skipped it." I was like, "Okay." Already. We'll see. I, I, I'm genuinely interested. All you guys listening, when you watch the show, like, please tweet me your thoughts. I'm, I'm th that in the Orville. I'm very curious. Real quick, before I let you move on, um, at the the Marvel panel at Comic Con, right? Jeff Loeb comes out again, like Angus Young, ACDC '87, like oh. just like oh. come on, come on, Speaking and everyone's like, yeah, Marvel, <laughs> and right, and so everybody's like, oh, we're bringing this and we're bringing this, and they're like, and we're doing Iron Fist season two, and it was like, <laughs> and then Danny <laughs> Rand stands up and he's like, yeah, and then somebody said something about Inhumans, and he was like, we have Punisher footage, and we're like, <laughs> okay, all right, all right, cool, well, cool. you know, Scott Bach, who did Iron Fist season one, yeah. is the showrunner for Inhumans. Um, and I, my, my inhuman scoop is that Lockjaw, the CG dog, mm -hmm. is, is the best part. Wow. He's really, he's, I mean. All right. He's the best yeah. part. Yeah. <laughs>
Do we have anything else on the inside scoops? Oh, no, you know, I just we'll know more as more is released. But I just we have so many great TV shows, and even if the fall pilot season isn't great, I think that we're still going to be we're going to have so yeah. much to look forward to. So yeah, we're in good shape with those returning. Definitely, ones. thank yeah. God. Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> it's great to have you here. So you're here for TV. another co couple more days. Couple us. more days. Yeah, the press okay. tour lasts for about two two and a half weeks. I'm only here for sort of the last leg of it, last okay. week or so. So nice. yeah, it's it's been Yay. busy but good. We love having you on the show, Thanks, Allison guys. Keen. Now. Thanks. What's next, Grace? Well, we're going to go back to our friend, Allison Keen. <laughs> oh! Performer of the Week live! Whoa. Okay, I'm here for Performer of Cody the Week Cody doesn't have to studio. edit the video into the show. I know. Thank Look you. Cody's screaming back there. <laughs> Thank you, Cody, for all of your hard work in the past and in the future when I'm back in Atlanta. Um, so I'm a little behind on my shows. We talked yes. about that. But I am caught up with Game of Thrones. And of while there are a lot of great performances, this episode, Spoils of War, belong to Drogon. And I have given this award to a... <laughs> And here he is now. <laughs> I have given this award to a dog, so why not a CG dragon? Yes. Um, <laughs> R.I.P. Right, Martin. That, oh. Well, I mean, but no, not, he, not, not actually. He's he okay. Die. The show The died. dog is okay. The dog Just, is fine. <laughs> He's okay. Um, the show was canceled. But yeah. yes, this, I mean, guys, you talked about it yesterday, but this episode was amazing on every single level. Yeah. But that, the CG budget was on point. Unbelievable. On point for Drogon. And when he came in, I mean, we thought it wasn't going to get any better than Arya and fighting Brienne and, you yeah. know, meeting up with Bran again and, and Sansa and everything. And then suddenly, and then, you know, Danny and John stuff and Dragon Glass and First Men and White Walkers. Yeah. And it was like, boom, dragon fight. Yeah. Like, dragon it fight. was. <laughs> Incredible, and the 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 way that Drogon, and I I feel like I mean I know that he's not a real thing, guys. Like this, you know, I, I understand Wait, this is like a CG thing. What? I'm Wait but a second. Hold on. He's still my performer of the week because it that elevated that episode to such a amazing degree. I mean, yeah. I had heart palpitations, and 100%. it's yeah. And I watch so much TV. You guys do too, and it's like to have a visceral reaction to something like that is so rare. Screaming. I'm so screaming. I, was, I just yeah, like I'm Drogon. screaming. I was just going, yeah. <laughs> And then when he got hit with the the crossbow, yeah, I felt really terrible for him. He had just that was, <laughs> Josh sorry. and I totally did coordinate this. He was Josh like, "So I can do my dramatic reenactment of the whole episode, actually." <laughs> but yeah, I, it was an incredible episode, and and you know to see Danny as this dragon rider again, and to see him come in and just eviscerate these Lannister yes. armies, and. It was so emotional and so intense, and to me, that is like what we have been waiting for with this show. 100%. So, and Drogon brought it. My Drogon. favorite shot of that—he <laughs> brought was it. He brought his A game. Bird's eye, where you see his first uh, blast, and it's just like yes. blasting through that army, like melting them. It's yeah. like that was a line, it's and like, I blew see it up. Ya. Yeah, goodbye. Yeah, it incredible. Was, uh, yeah, performer of the week, and you guys can see performer of the week here every week. Uh, um, Allison, it'll be on Thursdays. Yes, uh, it'll be it'll air on Thursdays, and she does it via Atlanta until That's right. she moves here to Los Angeles, and we can watch so Penguin forever. games together. Soon. Yep. Go Pens. <laughs> she's a she's a she's a big Pittsburgh Penguins fan, guys. That's not the yeah. only reason I bring her on the show. True story. Um, and I learned that that's hockey. <laughs> <laughs> Learning new things every day. You can check out Grace's sports report on ESPN 8, <laughs> The Ocho. The Ocho. All right, let's do a Twitter question. Grace, what do you think? All right, so I got one question for you guys. It's yeah. from Scooby Dooby Doo <laughs> um, at Subatomic Freak. What's a movie or property that you'd love to see adapted to TV? How about Beverly Hills Cop? Well, they've been, they've been talking about that forever. They've been doing that for a long time. Yeah, yeah, thinking about it. Just, doing but it. what it really what? Beyond Beverly Hills Cop, the American treasure, what would you want to see adapted? To what TV? haven't they adapted? I feel right? like at this I, point, you know, like I'm really going to have to think, yeah, really hard about this. Um, I, I mean, my mind always goes to comedy, and okay. I would love to see some sort of uh, like a, a MacGruber television series. Oh, shit. Because that would actually yeah. be great. We, I know I'm MacGruber totally 2 script is done, but that may never get made. But I could totally see a MacGruber TV series on a Netflix a la T Wet Hot American Summer. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I honestly have no idea. My mind is a blank. Because everything I'm thinking, I'm like, they did that. They They're did like, that. Yeah, they, they did, did that. that. And then yeah. it failed miserably. And, they, and then they rebooted it two years later. I know I'm going to think of failed. this later. Yeah, and, and be like, that's the one. And just in this moment, ugh. But you know what? Actually, that reminds me. How to lose a guy in 10 days. Well, one that just came to mind was Dark Crystal. How to lose a guy in 10 episodes. Ooh. This guy's yeah, called the Bachelor. This is why he gets paid the big bucks. <laughs> they're not that big. But you know, just like something in my mind just popped like Dark Crystal, you know, and they're doing oh, it. They're doing yeah. it on Netflix. Yeah. So it's just like, yes. I don't know. I got nothing. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, you know. It's all right. Can all right. You? All right. Allison Keene, um, <laughs> it's a joy having you here on the show. It we are going to do a. You're the best. Um, we're going to do a real quick. Thanks for betting television. <laughs> of the day. Your pick today. If you could pick any TV personality to give your eulogy, who would it be? Chris Harrison. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on. 
Because he tried to turn in the awesome. Bachelorette last night. He tried to turn the Bachelorette last night into 60 minutes. And that Here's Bachelorette finale, we'll talk about it on a Friday with Sinead DeFries, but that Bachelorette finale was an absolute joke. <gasps> joke. Well, he can, make, he can make the most mundane things sound astoundingly <laughs> important and dramatic. Truth. That's true. It would be, yeah. he would, he would <laughs> confirm so that awesome. I was. His hands are so small they could hold the microphone with two. He would confirm that I was here for the right reasons. Does okay. he have baby hand? And he Tiny would, he would talk about how life is a leap of faith, you know, like it would just be, and it would be the most dramatic graveside service ever. Yeah. So it would be, yeah, Chris Harrison. True. That's amazing. <laughs> Mine, mine's easy. Tony Soprano is like, oh, he's dead. Move on. <laughs> Like, I, that's who I want. I, I don't want my funeral to be anything special. I want everybody drinking and, like, regaling in stories. Right, no, like, right. like, eulogy up there or something. Like, I want Tony Soprano. Yeah, he's dead. Move on. Oh, see, my interpretation was it had to be, like, a presenter or a host of some kind. No. But, like, I anybody. like the I didn't understand the that. question. Drogon. But <laughs> and I, I won't respond to it. I'm just going to choose Drogon for all of my pick of the day <laughs> answers. I'm like, I want Drogon. No, I said I wanted um, Selena Meyer from Veep. Ah, that's oh, that's Because good. I feel like she would be irreverent, irreverent inappropriate, ah, and drinking. Oh, all right. Um, and that's that's exactly how I would hope my funeral would be. So <laughs> nice. perfection. That's it. Collider TV Talk Live here on a Tuesday, ESPN 8, The Ocho. Before we get out of here, <laughs> Allison Keen, where can the good people find you on the internet? At Keen TV and also Collider.com, all of our TV coverage, and we got a lot coming up for fall. Boom. Shagalaka Grace. And you guys can find me everywhere at Mrs. Graceface. And I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga, Twitter and Instagram, uh, The Josh McCuga Show on YouTube and here every day on Collider TV Talk, 11 a.m. PST. We're live tomorrow, Wednesday, with Emma Fife. We'll see you then. Until then, put down the remote, pick up the remote. <laughs> hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.